Good morning, Frag fans. <laughs> that sounded a lot better in my head. So we'll just stick with good morning. Um, good morning and welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. I hope you guys are well. All is good here. Um, very exciting morning for me because I'm about to review a first on YouTube, which is always nice, um, and a fragrance that I've been quite excited about since I heard of its release. So I've had it on pre-order and I managed to pick it up yesterday. And here it is. And this is... I'm going to murder some pronunciation here, so I po apologise in advance. This is the new one from Marc Antoine Barioche, or Barosh, Barioche, and it's called Encelada. Not Enchilada. We're not talking about Spanish Mexican food. We're talking about outstanding modern perfumery. Um, like all of them from the house, they are from the nose of Quentin Bish, who is a perfumer I have become quite obsessed obsessed with, actually. I really, really adore his work. He's very um, good at making modern fragrances and using lots of interesting aroma chemicals to create his fragrances. Now, I've had an, an interesting relationship with um, some of Quinton's work. Obviously, Ganymede is the one that everybody talks about. Now, I've mentioned Ganymede in various videos, but I haven't done a review of it as yet. Um, and the reason I've spoken, I've spoken about it so much is because for a long time, I didn't get on with it. I really... It just didn't smell very, very nice on me, but I did retain some samples of it. So periodically, every few months, I'll give it a little spray and think, nope, still not for me. Um, and then I tried it on a hot day and it was magnificent. So I don't know whether I sort of warmed up to it or I've just been wearing it in the wrong climate or whatever, but now I absolutely love it. I think what has helped me along the way though is having this, which is Bois Imperial from Essential Parfums by Quentin Bish. Um, and there are some similarities between the two, especially in the dry down side. And I absolutely adore this one. There is a full review of it on the channel. Um, this is fantastic. I wear it all the time. My wife wears it all the time. And it's probably the best value perfume out there at the moment. I have another one from Essential Parfums called Infusion Fig by Natalie Lawson, which a review of that will be coming up quite soon too. So thanks to spending an awful lot of time with this, I fell in love with Ganymede, and I do think Ganymede is definitely worth all the hype it gets. It's a fantastic fragrance. Um, it's an award-winning fragrance, and for good reason. So I was incredibly excited when I heard that this one's coming out. There are two more. There's B683 and B683 Extrate, which is actually quite a lot different to B683. Both lovely but the extra is the one I want. Definitely will get a bottle of that when I've saved up enough pennies for it because it's quite expensive. So this one, um, it's just been released. As I say, it came out yesterday. I had it on pre-order and I picked it up from a Les Centers in, in Victoria, in Pimlico. Um, and if you're in London, you must simply must go to Les Centers. The team there are excellent. They have a fantastically curated collection of perfumes in the store and they're always looking to add new interesting, often British and unique uh, fragrances to the collection. So if you are in the UK, please pop into Le Centres and give them a go. They also stock Tower. I think they're the only people in London that stock Andy Tower's work. So well worth exploring. Anywho, I'm waffling. I'm aware, well aware of that. <clears throat> Encelada is the new one. Um, as I say, I picked it up yesterday and thankfully I was working on a late shift last night. So I picked up the perfume. I came home, got ready for work, literally doused myself in it. Um, and it was a hot, humid evening I was working, and off to work I trotted. I'm obviously now wearing it again today, and for the purposes of the review, I'm going to treat myself to yet another spray. So what we'll do is we'll let this settle down, and then we'll go through the notes, and we will talk a little about the perfume. Now, the first thing that I noticed when Encelada hit my skin was it reminded me an awful lot of one of my favorite perfumes of all time. And that is Nudiflorum by Nassimato. The opening, they're really quite similar and I have worn them side by side since I've brought it home. And I do find the opening really, really similar. They go in different directions though. So, you know, um, the only, you know, that first sort of half an hour, they're, they're, they're pretty, pretty alike. Um, and then they kind of do, do their own thing. So if we look at the notes um, and what the, the, the brand has said about the perfume. So that on the top you have rhubarb, you have sandalwood, you have cedar, you have vetiver, and you have tonka bean. And what they're doing is they're describing this as a, a fresh jungle um, by the side of a volcano. That's spot on. Because the rhubarb, when it hits your skin, it's kind of scorched or charred. It's, it's sweet. 
um, a little bit, I wouldn't say smoky, but I would say there's hints of smoke, if that makes sense. It's not like, you know, there's loads of birch tar and it's just, wow, this is a bonfire. It doesn't smell like that at all. You have the sweetness of the rhubarb that's been charred. And sometimes, like, you know, if you're cooking a pineapple on a barbecue or something like that, which I've done many times, the smokiness seems to bring out the sweetness, uh, especially of a fruit when, 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 you know, you apply direct heat to it. And I think that's what's happened here. As this... Um, sort of sweetness arrives it, it does kind of fill the room because i have to point out at this at this particular bit as this hit my skin for the first time i couldn't believe how potent it was this is such a strong strong fragrance sillage is enormous it leaves a massive train behind you when you're walking around this trail of wonderful scent just seems to swirl around you and it's it's quite quite magnificent it is um a lot sweeter than say ganymede um i think Ganymede, if you were to compare the two, which inevitably people are going to do, I think Ganymede is a little more um, original, a little more out there, um, a little bit harder to like, uh, as I can you know, testify. It took me a long time to fall for this one. Whereas this one was an instant hit with me because A, it reminds me of Nudiflorum, which I love, and B, it's sweet, it's airy, it's potent, and it's lovely. Now, as the rhubarb kind of settles down you never really lose it by the way the other materials start to come into play the vetiver is i think giving this sort of uh representation of a jungle but it, on my skin it kind of plays peekaboo it's sort of you get flicks of green it's a bit like uh you know an andy warhol painting with a sort of color splattered everywhere so you'll get green flecks through the perfume then it starts to become quite soft and leathery it's almost like they describe it as an animal hide i do get that but for me it's more suede whereas if you look at, say, Nudiflorum, the leather's a lot sort of harsher and more earthy. Whereas with this one, there is a kind of a mineral-like earthiness that sits with this suede to create a really, really textured perfume. You can almost touch it. It smells divine. It's really, really lovely. And again, it is very, very potent. But because I think, like a lot of Quintin's stuff, or Quintin's stuff, a lot of Quintin's perfumes, he uses so many aroma chemicals in it. Some people are going to not pick up on everything and other people are going to smell everything. But trust me, people around you are going to smell everything. It radiates this wonderful olfactory glow. It's just, uh, it's lovely to be around. It's going to be a real compliment getting fragrance. I'm sure of that. Although, funnily enough, despite dousing myself in it and working in the middle of the public last night, nobody commented on it, which I was surprised about because I would have put it down as one of these fragrances that everyone's gonna sort of throw themselves at you when they smell it on you. But it is a beautifully well-constructed perfume that I find really, really enchanting. And as I say, I found it really, really easier to, to, to instantly fall for um, than Ganymede. Um, although saying that, you know, um, Boisse Imperial, I fell for that one straight away too. So, you know, maybe it's just me. Um, I just think this is gonna do well. If it, is it gonna outsell Ganymede is a good question. I don't think it will. I think Ganymede is such a legendary perfume now. It's so sort of well, you know, the hype train has successfully completed its journey with, with Ganymede. So I don't think you're going to have the problems, you know, the, the, I don't know, not problems. I don't think, you know, Ganymede's going to be sort of quite untouchable, I think, in, in terms of success. But this will do well because it's the sweetness in this makes it instantly likable. Now, interestingly, um, Ganymede um, and B683, they all have a sort of a celestial tie-in. Um, and so does this one. So Encelada is a satellite of Saturn. So they're keeping with this, you know, this cosmic um, direction of the house. And I'm really, really impressed with it. I think in terms of, you know, cost, it's £150, but it's a 100ml bottle. It's a beautiful bottle. The sprayers are excellent. They give a, a, a rather steady mist as that, at that pressurised atomizer. When you press that button, you get this lovely mist comes out. And... It's beautiful. What I really like about this, obviously it smells great. The performance is superb. This lasts and lasts and lasts. If you go to work wearing it, you'll come back smelling of it, no problem at all. And you'll notice it all day. There are, <clears throat> it kind of does remind me of other things. Obviously we've mentioned Nudiflorum. There's almost, and I don't know why, I think maybe it's just because I was wearing it on a hot day. I'm not so much picking it up now, but there was like a little tiny lichen, likeness to Oud for Greatness. Um, just a, a bit, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm sure this reminds me of Oud for Greatness. I could be way off, and they're very, very separate fragrances, but there's just a bit in the dry down that kind of reminded me of that perfume in particular. 
But the dry down is glorious and the, it's just this textured vibe to it. It's really, really rather lovely. So what we'll do now is we'll have a look and see who could possibly wear this wonderful creation. Now for me, I think anyone can wear this. This will certainly appeal to the more mature fragrance enthusiasts like myself are going to love it. I think the younger thruster, the younger fragrance enthusiast will also really, really enjoy this because of the sweetness. Um, and it's not overly sweet either. It's tempered so well. The perfume is pitched perfectly. Completely unisex. Um, I love the smell of this on me and I can't wait for my wife to give it away because I think she'll like it. Maybe um, she probably actually saying that won't like it because she's a little averse to sort of suede leathery notes within perfume. So maybe that won't be for her. Um, but I think, you know, for a, a female that likes it, exciting and kind of light and dark fragrances, it will certainly be great for women too. It's just, it's, it's a really, really good perfume. I'm very, very happy with it. I must admit in the opening when it, it smelt very much like nudie floor and I was kind of a bit, ooh, ugh. But, but it's an interesting one because if I'd smelt it without buying it first, I don't know if I'd have bought it. And if I hadn't, I would have missed out, definitely. I know from my own sort of experience, when I smelt it, I would have thought that smells a lot like Nudie Florum, and I love Nudie Florum, I don't need it. And I would have walked away and left it without actually wearing it properly. Now I've worn it properly, I can see that they are very different fragrances as the fragrance um, goes in its, you know, they both go in their own directions kind of thing. So I'm really, really pleased that I did um, take a bit of a gamble on it because it's a magnificent perfume. And I think it's one that you're really, really gonna wanna try. Like all um, aroma chemical driven modern fragrances, it's not gonna be for everybody. So, you know, it's not a blind buy. I, I took a risk, but I'm an idiot. Um, and it paid off for me, thankfully. Um, but I you know, strongly, strongly recommend that you sample this one first, but I think you're really gonna enjoy it. So there you have it. This is my take on this rather beautiful and incredibly difficult to pronounce new fragrance, Encelada. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, we are running miles behind. I've got a ton of new fragrances that I need to get through. Um, so we'll try and churn out some more videos as soon as we can. But listen, it's always a pleasure making these videos and we really, really hope you enjoy them. So thank you very much for your time and we shall see you soon on the next video. Cheers, thanks and bye.